Hello and welcome to the admissions talk for the Dyson School of Design Engineering at Imperial College London. My name is Dr Sam Cooper and I'm the admissions tutor for the department and I'm also an associate professor in materials design and energy science as well as the first year mathematics course leader. So here's a beautiful shot of London on a sunny day. In the middle of this image you can see the entire Imperial College South Kensington campus uh, with beautiful Hyde Park just above it. In the bottom corner of this image, on the right-hand side, you're just about to see a building turn blue, and that's the Dyson building where our department is hosted. So here is a shot closer up of our building, which shows the Science Museum, a very famous touristic site just to the left of it, and to the right of it is the rest of the Imperial College campus. And inside our building, we've got beautiful research labs. Uh, we also have a hack space associated with our department, a wonderful cafe and breakout spaces constantly full of uh, activity with the students working on their courseworks and personal projects, as well as uh, a very beautiful library uh, and boardrooms and meeting rooms and staff offices, etc. We have recently renovated our workshops to add another mezzanine floor, uh, and so we have quite a large amount of working space for students to pursue projects, whether that's for the courses built into the degree or just for their own passion projects. So what is design engineering? We like to think of it as the fusion of design thinking, engineering understanding and practice, as well as a culture of innovation and enterprise. We're bringing all of these things together in one place, and we think this is kind of the future of engineers in the modern world who are able to design products for companies as diverse as Rolls-Royce to Google from boutique design firms all the way up to uh, classic international multinational firms. So to give you some sense of the kind of uh, products that might come out of a well-trained design engineering student, uh, the space of customized and adaptive prosthetics is a nice example, as well as sustainable habitat design, uh, robotics for disaster areas, personal data security systems, spatial audio for world building interfaces, uh, and educational children's games. Now that is quite an eclectic list, and you may be thinking, what do those things have in common? And of course, what it is, is the spaces where technology and engineering align closely with human needs. So requiring engineers to think very closely about what problems they're really solving and how this is going to relate to the people who use the product at the end of it. So in order to do this, you need to focus on not just the building of artifacts, i.e. objects, but also systems, services, experiences, and in order to understand all those things, you need to have not just an understanding of technical function, but also aesthetics, economic function, social function, latent functions. So it's bringing together a very diverse set of skills, which you think are absolutely vital for the modern engineer. We have a four-year MEng program, which is probably why most of you are watching this talk today. But in addition, we have two joint master's courses uh, with the Royal College of Art, which is just across the road. And these are innovation design engineering and global innovation design. And then of course, in our department, all of our professors have their own PhD students, which are, of course, uh, students as well. So over the course of the four years that you study with us, you will have exposure to design type courses as well as classical engineering type courses. But as the course progresses, you will see that the lines between these two activities will start to blur. Uh, the first two years we consider somewhat foundational, uh, giving you lots of the key skills necessary. And in the last two years, we spend more time putting those skills into practice. So, for example, in the first year, you have human centered design, but alongside that, you've got classical engineering skills like mathematics, computing, mechanics, and materials, all giving you the foundational skills necessary to make products and bring them to life. In the second year, we extend your design thinking into sustainability and industrialization, as well as understanding how to work in organizations. But you also then advance your technical skills with things like data science, additional mechanics and thermofluids, uh, as well as electronics and gizmo. And gizmo is a module that's solely focused around the deployment of uh, beautiful coursework. So every student has to make their own uh, wonderful device that fits into a very broad design remit, but allows you to immediately show off all the technical skills you've already learned in electronics and mathematics and uh, robotics. So in year three, uh, you start to experience more about the world of business. So think about innovation and enterprise. And you also have your first uh, major group coursework. So this is Design Engineering Futures. And you'll come together and work with a group of probably four students for full two terms in order to come up with a sort of uh, provocative new uh, design that interacts with the world in 20 years time. You have two modules, optimization and robotics, which are very advanced technical modules 
that really lean on all of the technical topics that you've covered so far. Uh, and you also have your first experience of freedom, of choice. So you get two elective modules, one classical elective module and one I explore module, which is a module where you don't actually need to do it for credit. Um, it's just about having an experience of doing something totally different from your everyday studies. In the third year, you also don't have a third term. So after finishing your second term, we will have helped you over the course of the year to apply for an industrial placement. And we then expect you to go off for six months and pursue that placement with a company. And we've had students traveling all over the world, going to all kinds of different companies, which I'll talk about a bit later on in this talk. In the fourth year, you come back from your industrial placement and you only have one compulsory module, which is called Enterprise Rollout. You also have your master's project. So you and one of our professors will team up for the year one-on-one, -on -one, and you'll probably be integrated into their research group and you'll pursue a project for the entire three terms of the year. You'll also have four elective modules. And again, that's more freedom of, of choice for you. Perhaps coming back from your industrial placement, you might have more insight into the kinds of things that really you are passionate about. And these electives will allow you to explore them further. Perhaps you might be interested in more in uh, business modules or perhaps to go to another engineering department like bioengineering, or, or you may wish to add some additional technical grounding like a machine learning type module. So we have a very strong emphasis throughout the program on learning by doing. So we have you making things from day one, literally from day one with an induction task. But here is the coursework for Electronics 2. It's a dancing, balancing robot. Uh, you can see it's only got two wheels there. And if I played the audio as someone makes a bit of sound, uh, this robot would dance around to it or be controlled by a mobile phone. The module is structured such that each of the components are explained to you one by one, and you gradually assemble, assemble the circuit board necessary to make this device. And coursework is really a very strong theme of the module in general. So we have uh, about 80% plus of the total degree marks are associated with coursework marks rather than exams, which would be more aligned with a conventional engineering degree. We believe that this prepares our students much better for the real life environment where exams perhaps are often quite an inauthentic measure of knowledge with this sort of time pressure and lack of access to various resources. And also the idea that you will so often need to work in groups in industry in order to get good outcomes. So we expose you to that throughout. And here's one of our, I think, Electronics One courseworks with a little robot remote control that needs to go around and collect information from its path. So it needs to detect a magnetic signal, uh, an audio signal, and I think, uh, perhaps go around an obstacle course as well. All the way through the degree, when we ask you to make something, we will typically ask you to exhibit it. We will ask you to figuratively and literally stand behind your work. And we may well invite both professors as well as industrial experts to come and see the work that you've done and ask you questions about how you designed it and why you made the decisions that you did. Uh, and as I mentioned in the module structure, we really encourage you to start synthesizing your knowledge as you move through the degree. So as each year passes, we will ask you to pull together the threads from both your technical and your design theory in order to make the outcomes that are necessary. So here are some examples of courseworks from the audio experience and design module, which is an electric elective module offered by our department. And you can see that this brightly colored thing in the top right hand corner is actually a, um, a model of the human cochlea, the human hearing system different parts of it light up depending on the different frequencies of sound it hears. Now, what's very uh, pleasing about this coursework is it clearly requires a student to understand uh, manufacturing and prototyping, electronics, coding, mathematics, as well as the audio skills necessary, and as well as the theory of hearing and about how people work in order to implement uh, this thing. And it comes out with a very pleasing result. We are also a department with a very strong emphasis on robotics. We have three robotics professors in our department uh, and we are the home to many robots. And some of these are small explorer robots like the sort of spidery thing you can see in the bottom right hand corner or just a manipulator. It's a very strong uh, theme of robotic hands and manipulation in our department as well as larger robots like the guy on the left who's Robot De Niro uh, that's able to uh, replace workers in the industrial context and reduce injuries and reduce training time. So. Throughout the degree, as I mentioned, there is a great emphasis on coursework, and these courseworks will often be submitted in the form of both a report and possibly also an artifact. Uh, we really strongly encourage students to have very advanced and technical communication skills. This is not just good enough to have a Word document with no formatting. You need to really understand how to make an impact on, for example, investors when you communicate your ideas. 
and we won't accept any kind of um, substitution of uh, aesthetics for technical rigor, but you can certainly do both. And these are ways that you can really uh, improve the impact of your work. In the final year, we have this uh, master's project. So throughout the year, you're working with a professor one-on-one. -on -one, and here are a couple of examples of projects that I've particularly supervised. So here is IPNOS. And the device you're looking at is the little lamp hanging on the bedside table. The student wants to explore sleep and sleep health. So first they started by doing exploration of what are all the things about sleep that you can measure. So perhaps you can measure the temperature of the room, the sound, the light, the heart rate of the sleep or the amount of movement, perhaps the humidity even. You can also actuate a range of things. What things can you change? Well, you can certainly change the amount of sound or light or temperature in the room as well. What's the relationship between these two things that might mediate or improve sleep health? So the student went through a uh, prototyping exercise and started to build an object that could both measure and actuate, collected data that would allow them to understand the environment in which this object sits, read the literature around sleep in order to understand what might be beneficial, uh, and did some use their data processing skills in order to extract interesting conclusions and allow the user to receive uh, customized recommendations each morning when they wake up about how they might improve their sleep health the next day. So, as I mentioned, there are an compulsory industrial placement in our program and this is six months long and our students have gone off to a very wide range of very well-known companies so Dyson, Apple, Ocado, Brompton, you will have heard of these companies but they've also often gone off to small boutique firms perhaps a startup focusing around 3D printing there are a few examples of that last year um, where they can have a huge impact they may be you know team member number five and come in and have a huge impact so each of the different students has different preferences for these kind of things and we are very supportive whatever it is that they want to do uh, we have some lovely graduate success stories so this is cubot it's a spin out from one of our master's courses and it's a little robot that goes under the floors of houses instead of a human uh, and sprays insulating foam uh, just above them so that you can insulate the house without sending a human into a hazardous space uh, petty plea is a clothing line uh, because little children are, they grow so fast that they are actually some of the worst offenders in terms of the huge amount of pollution that the fashion industry produces because they grow out of their clothes so quickly. Petit plis are sort of origami type clothes that grow with the child and allow you to produce less waste. Bear Conductive, another spin out company, it's an electronically conductive ink so that you can draw, literally draw a circuit on paper and use it to uh, conduct electricity, perhaps send signals, turn lights on, create exciting effects, perhaps when you open a packaging box or uh, is a means for teaching electronics to children. Now, if all of that sounds like it might be of interest to you and you'd like to come, these are our requirements. If you're studying the A-levels, you're going to need at least an A-star and two A's, and that A-star itself needs to be in mathematics. The two other grades can be in any other subject in principle, although we do have preferences towards subjects that align well with our course, and more information about that can be found on our website. We also, of course, have uh, specified scores for all other qualifications, including IB and various other international qualifications, and details of all these are constantly available and constantly updated on our departmental website. You will need to submit a personal statement, and we're really looking for you to demonstrate that not only have you uh, got an interest in the subject, but you've actually made an effort to learn new skills and gone out and deployed those skills. So you've made things and you've gone into the world and perhaps you've even made the effort to enter the things that you've made into competitions or at least have them tested in some way externally to show that you've done a good job. We don't have an admissions test exactly, but we do have an interview that will include some technical questions. Uh, we have standard college-wide uh, English language requirements, but there's no need for ATAS. Last year, we had around 700 eligible applicants. We interviewed around 300 of those. We made around 170 offers with the expectation of about 90 students to start each year. This means we've got an admissions uh, to application ratio of around seven to one, uh, which we think is very healthy, but we expect that to grow each year because many places in the world still haven't heard of design engineering, so many students are missing out on the opportunity to transfer. We expect to take around 90 students each year, and interestingly and excitingly, our department has about 45% female students. This is very unusual uh, in engineering departments, and we're absolutely delighted about that. Around 60% of our students are from the UK, 15 from the EU, and 25 from elsewhere. If you do the design engineering course, you will end up with an MEng qualification, just like every other engineering course at Imperial College. 
You will also have a degree accredited by the IED, IMECI, and the IET. Uh, and not only have they accredited our course, but they've given us very strong uh, positive feedback, suggesting that the way that we've structured our program, both in terms of hands-on learning, teamwork, uh, and high coursework loadings, allows students to uh, develop very relevant industrial skills. So our graduates have gone on already to work at various well-known international companies, uh, and they are thriving. And what's very exciting is each year that we have a set of graduates, we have got a bigger alumni network and a, and a broader pool of people to come back and inspire the next generation of DE students. Uh, and Imperial more broadly is of course, one of the world's uh, top 10 universities with seventh in the world as of 2022 uh, in the QS World University rankings. And we do very well elsewhere as well we have also got an extremely strong student society. So DESSOC is our student run student society for design engineering students. And they're extremely active on campus. And I think several years in a row have won the prize for the best student society on campus. So there's always events and activities that our students can do with each other uh, to maybe just get to know each other or also do hackathons and learn new skills and invite speakers. And that's very exciting for them. So that's all I've got to tell you today. Uh, I think our program offers an extremely exciting prospects for budding engineers. And if you'd like to know anything more, feel free to get in touch via design.engineering at imperial.ac.uk or follow us on Twitter at Imperial Dyson or head to our website to find out more information. Thank you very much for listening.